Ancient Egypt is considered by many to be the principal civilization of Africa, and it was certainly among the greatest civilizations in human history. In previous videos, I mentioned that one of the causes for the fall of the African continent was African diversity. I think many of you guys agreed, and so I wanted to make a fun video about an alternative history. What would Africa look like if Egypt had conquered the entire continent? <laughs> What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. My website Afrographics is available for resources in African history if you need it. Also, if you like this channel, you can support this content on Patreon.com. And with a word from my sponsors, there's a new social media platform dedicated to educating and uplifting our people. No longer do we have to be censored for speaking our truth. Our Black Truth is black owned and operated, and a place where you can post your businesses and even monetize your content. You can download the app at Google Play or the App Store, and you can visit the website at OurBlackTruth.com. Links to everything in the description box below. To begin, try not to take this video too seriously because it's really just historical conjecture. Egypt never conquered the African continent and expressing what that may have looked like would be nearly impossible to say. However, I do think we have some tangible examples to advance fair speculation like how Egypt colonized the region of Nubia during the New Kingdom period. We can also use some examples outside of the continent, like how Rome conquered much of Northern Europe and influenced it from there. I think these historical events can help us paint an interesting picture concerning what an Egyptian empire across the continent might have looked like. On a realistic note, ancient Egypt even during its greatest era was probably not even capable of fulfilling an enormous task like that and they seemingly expressed no interest in doing so. One of the few possible signs of physical Egyptian penetration deeper into the continent is revealed to us by Hamid Zayed. Contributing a chapter in a general history of Africa, here's what he has to say. A few years ago, there was talk of the discovery of Egyptian objects far away in the heart of the continent. A statuette of Osiris, dating from the 7th century before our era, was found in Zaire on the banks of the river Lualaba, near the confluence of the Kalmangongo. A statue inscribed with the cartouche of Tutmosis III was found south of the Zambezi. However, a critical study of the circumstances in which these objects were discovered makes it impossible at the present time to conclude that they indicate the existence of relations in the 7th or 15th centuries before our era between Egypt and the regions mentioned above. So as we can see, it's inconclusive as to whether or not this was actual physical contact in ancient times or by some other means. But I do find it interesting that a statue with an inscription from Tutmosis III was found because he created the largest empire ancient Egypt had ever seen. Anyway, let's get back to our alternative scenario. If Egypt had conquered the entire continent of Africa, I think one of the biggest influences would have been the writing system. Most of Africa relied on oral history to communicate past events, but there were certainly some that used writing forms, like the ideographic writing system called Ntibidi in Nigeria, and the form of writing created by the Songhai priesthood. Also, the Giz script of Ethiopia played a significant role in that region's history. I think that if Egypt controlled the continent, there may have been more of an open form of writing established by various people. They perhaps would have borrowed the Egyptian script and created their own, or they would have used it outright. The reason I believe other Africans would have followed suit with Egyptian writing is because the Kushites did. The Kushite writing form, known as Meroitic script, is ultimately derived from the Egyptian writing, so we see a real historical example of other Africans borrowing Egyptian script. Egyptian writing was not only valuable for the Kushite people, but even people outside of the continent as there are multiple writing forms that are derived from Egyptian. I think one of the beneficial things for a vast Egyptian empire across the continent would be the availability of more information on ancient Africa in general. We see this with the region of Nubia. Because of Egyptian contact and interaction, We've learned more about the region of Nubia and some of its history which is extremely beneficial to any history enthusiast. 
This is also the case with Roman written sources on ancient northern Europe, for example. If it weren't for Roman conquests, we may not have learned as much as we know now. The similarities between Doric, or in general, Greek architecture and Egyptian architecture has been noticed and discussed. An art historian named Alan Marcan believed that these similarities may equate to Egyptian influence on Greek architecture. If we examine the characteristics of Doric architecture with a view to their origin, we cannot fail to reach the conviction that a large majority of them may be traced to Egyptian prototypes. We have found reminiscences of Egypt in Doric temple architecture in Atemenos with its sacred trees and springs and altar. We have seen that the temple base, the peripteral supports and the gable roof are not necessarily non-Egyptian forms. We have found that the Greek preserves the Egyptian methods of construction, even to the use of slanting walls and stucco columns. That the temple plan shows reminiscences of the peristyle and hypostyle halls, as well as of the sanctuary. That the diminution, entesis, etchinus, and annuli of the Doric shaft may be best explained upon the hypothesis of an Egyptian origin and that the Ionic and Corinthian capitals became intelligible in the same way. Interestingly enough, I don't see other Africans on a large scale mimicking Egyptian architecture in the same way the Greeks may have done, according to Alan Markand. Africans on a large scale seemed to have an architectural style that was very environmentally friendly with the use of adobe and earth brick, especially in West Africa. Even if Egypt managed to conquer the region, I think there would be little incentive for them to impose an architectural style or even for West Africans or Central Africans to mimic it. And I think this goes for other Africans across the continent. They probably would have maintained the integrity of their engineering traditions. The diversity of African architecture is well documented and I don't think the Egyptians could have made it more homogenous in form. And lastly, even though I think African diversity is beautiful, it still was detrimental in the long run because no pan-African identity ever existed on the continent. I think if a large empire unified the continent, that would have changed the history of Africa. One way a pan-African union could have possibly come about would be through religion. Even though there are countless ethnic groups in Africa with different languages and identities, an embrace of Nile Valley religion or thought could go a long way in promoting a unified goal. This seemed to be the case with the Kushite king Payanki, who mobilized the Nubians to restore Nile Valley religion. Now, whether this was just a tool that King Payanki used to unify Nubians against Egyptian and Libyan rulers doesn't really matter. The idea of a threat to their spiritual or ancestral belief was enough for a pan-Nubian push, if you will. I think, given this example, if Egypt conquered all of Africa, religious identity could work in a similar way against outside threats. We see this all the time with nearly every religion in the world. Theoretically, if this were to happen, any African leader or revolutionary could pull on the spiritual heartstrings of the people to unify multiple ethnic groups across the continent. Anyway guys, like I said in the beginning, I thought it would be fun to do a quick analysis on this alternative history scenario. Let me know what you think would happen if the continent was unified under some vast African empire. And if you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.